Welcome to Riley on Film. I'm your host, Damian Riley. You can find out more and subscribe for free always at RileyOnFilm.com. Now, on with the show. Top 10 Horror Films of the 2010s. I don't think I've ever been more aware of horror in any other decade other than this one. I think when I was a child I was very afraid of horror. So it's kind of neat to have uh, become a serious enthusiast of horror and horror directors and the way horror films are made. And I had seen the Evolution of Horror podcast that I heard about through Zobo with a Shotgun. And I saw that they were doing a top 10 horror films of the 2010s. And I thought I would be remiss if I didn't enjoy myself and make one of those. So I truly hope this will bring out these 10 films for you. Some of them you may have seen, others you may have just heard of, and others yet you may have not even heard of. So, if you're an enthusiast like me, I'm sure you've seen them all, but this is for everybody to hear why I picked them and why you should maybe see them again or see them for the first time. The first horrifying time. I have recorded episodes on every one of these, so I may release them this week, or I may just do new episodes on each of them, because as time goes by, like a fine wine, your appreciation of great art, especially horror art in cinema, tends to mellow and become more sweet, so watch for that on my podcast. I'm going to present these to you in ascending order because I think it's more fun that way. You can guess which one I picked for my number one, my number two, my number three, four, and five, and so forth. But for now, let's start with number 10. And like I said, I'm just going to give you like the basics of each film. I'm not going to get too much in depth. I'm going to save that for this week. Possibly on New Year's Eve, I'll be creating some more episodes about these particular movies because, man, they are awesome. So without any other further ado, I will jump in. My number 10, Overlord. This is a small group of American soldiers find horror behind enemy lines on the eve of D-Day. This is an amazing war film, but it's a simple stripped down war film with some great effects. I'll never forget the opening scenes where they're in that airplane. It's just mind blowing how they did it. This had something to do with J.J. Abrams, but it was directed by Julius Avery, like his stuff. and. It's something about the way the hatred for the Nazis and the hatred for what they're doing, and yet the insidious nature of the Nazis and how they're developing this weapon of a soldier, of an undead soldier, and it's done so well. I gave it a nine, I recall, because I thought, Maybe they embellished the let's make sure we hate these guys part of it, which is in most horror vengeance films. Uh, The rape was maybe necessary, but it just goes on for quite a while in that department. I think they could have jumped right into the monsters. It would have been better. But other than that, this made my 10, and it's definitely belonging in the 10 the top 10 of 2010 to 2020 horror films that i have seen moving right along to the next one number nine 
Horns with Daniel Radcliffe wins that uh, place. Horns is not, having been written by Joe King, Stephen King's son, obviously well written. I did read the novel after I saw the movie, very good novel. Obviously the novel's better. But Daniel Radcliffe does a great job in this, being kind of the everyman. There's a couple times where he's extremely scary looking. So I wouldn't recommend it for kids, but very exciting in this R-rated movie. The way that Juno Temple and and Daniel Radcliffe interact and play off one another is very good. She is extremely sexy in this and just does a great job. It's like going back and looking at your own mistakes and did people know about those mistakes or did they not? Sometimes... I won't call them mistakes, I'll just call them sins, but not in a religious sense. Just the places where you just missed it. You just knew you did wrong. That's what I'm referring to as a sin here. And it's those secret sins that really are the worst because nobody can really save you from those. And the horns will find you out. And I think the film does a great job of showing that making fun of morality and many many times it's a morality uh, poking fun and I loved this movie it didn't do huge it didn't do that well but I had to put it in my top 10 because in the last 10 years this is one of those horror movies that really does a lot with a little and of course the writing has to do with that My next film, number eight, is Jug Face. Jug Face tells the story of a pregnant teen trying to escape a backwoods community when she discovers that she may, she may be sacrificed to a creature in a pit. If it sounds out there, it is out there. If it sounds kind of low budget simple, it is low budget simple, but it achieves the out there on a very low budget. I loved everybody in it lauren ashley sean bridgers was great in this and it's just one of those films where you're not watching to quote roger ebert when he talked about uh winter's bone you're not watching these backwoods people you are walking among them you are going into their mobile homes you are part of what's happening in their subculture and the jug decides who will live and who will die. And it's quite interesting that way. There are many pokes at religion. And let me just say that I don't, you know, get excited about movies that poke at religion. However, along with the ability to calm and with the ability to heal a nation, a family, an individual, religion many times can harm equally if not more so and in jug face we see an example of what religion should never become my next film is number seven sinister not gonna say a whole lot about this other than i highly recommend it it's in my top 10 if you haven't seen it see it ethan hawk does a good job honestly it could be anybody though it's the story that's creepy. Please listen carefully. Number six is clown. If your thing is being scared by clowns, don't see it. Go see clown. Directed by John Watts, but also produced by Eli Roth. Number five, Hush. I have recommended Hush to more people that are just starting to get into horror than any other movie, I think. This is a deaf and mute writer who's trying to write a book and there's uh, an intruder at the windows. And some of those scenes when she's writing and she can't hear anything, you know she's deaf, he's standing right there, are just creepy. And he's got a really creepy mask. It almost looks like a human face, uh, 
attached to the mask. But you will not be sorry if you see this. Now, Mike Flanagan is the guy who directed it. I have to say, he has let me down. I didn't like The Haunting on Hill House. Uh, a few other things that he's done that have not really worked for me. But he definitely has the ability to make a great horror film when we see it in Hush. Number four, we're closing in on number one. Here we have uh, Take Shelter. Take Shelter has the inimitable force of Michael Shannon in the lead. His beautiful wife playing a uh, here and now real life lady, Jessica Chastain. And they're living their lives as he begins to lose his mind. But you have to kind of like figure that out for yourself. Is he losing his mind or is he the only one in touch with the storm that's coming? Is he crazy to be building a bomb shelter in his backyard? Or is he the only one like Noah to be uh, receiving messages and knowing that it's a thing to do? I can't give away anything for this because it's just so freaking good. This movie is so good. It's very slow at first, so give it a chance. But if you can watch Take Shelter from 2011, you will not regret it. This is definitely one of my favorite films of the last decade. My number three. The Strangers, Pray at Night. This is not the original Strangers. This is the sequel, Pray at Night. This film was amazing. I think that this is probably one of the best slasher presented films that I've ever seen, period. Uh, we'll talk about... I've got one up here higher than this, but... Yeah, The Strangers, Pray at Night is done so well. It's taking... Uh, inventory of horror slashers showing it to you and then giving it to you so much worse and so much more barbaric that you just kind of sit back and go this guy's doing whatever he wants with me the meaning the director it's quite good quite magical see the strangers pray at night you're never gonna know how it ends Number two, we're already at number two. I said we we're going to rush through this. Take a sip of my coffee there. Number two is one I wanted to mention when I was talking about number three because I think this is the best slasher film that I've ever seen. It is Your Next. I think Your Next does it. I think they set it up well. It's not too much set up. It's just right there laying it at your feet and then bringing in... The villain and the villains, and I don't want to give away anything, but it's basically when the Davison family comes under attack during their wedding anniversary getaway, the gang of mysterious killers soon learns that one of the victims harbors a secret talent for fighting back. And so we do see the vengeance play here, and it's amazing. I don't have to tell most horror fans about your next, because anytime I mention it in a Twitter post or anywhere, dinner party everybody's like oh yeah you're next now that is the shit and it is it definitely is okay drum roll please Brrr, okay here's the drum roll please we're gonna talk about number one this is my number one top 10 horror film of the 2010s tusk a brash and arrogant podcaster gets more than he bargained for when he travels to Canada to interview a mysterious recluse who has a rather disturbing fondness for walruses. I have become somewhat known for this movie because I defend it. People like to make fun of it. It does have an element of horror. But make no mistake, if you have not seen this movie... It will do things to you. It may keep you up at night. It may force you back to the TV at 1, 2 in the morning to re-examine what you have just seen and what you have experienced if it was really, truly what you thought you saw. That's the kind of film that Tusk is. It's also a tribute to The Old Man in the Sea. It's a tribute to... Uh, 
Michael Parks, who plays a role in the film, and may he rest in peace. He has the most amazing voice I've ever heard. It has a space for Haley Joel Osment. Oh, Genesis Rodriguez. Thank God he gave a space to her. What a beautiful actor she is. And the director is Kevin Smith. Now, I'm not... I don't normally really go crazy over Kevin Smith films. They're good. Don't get me wrong. They're, he's a good filmmaker. He's quirky, but he's good. Now, Tusk just moves into horror and I don't think he's ever done horror this well and I could joke about Tusk I could make comments about different things that are said in Tusk but I won't do it because I don't want to give it away but just oh Johnny Depp is in this too he's not listed in the credits but he is in it and watch for him if you haven't seen I'm assuming some people have not seen Tusk that's kind of who I'm my imagined audience right now but for everybody who has seen it, if you didn't like it, hmm, well, too bad for you because there's so much to like. I'll bet you you probably wouldn't like Nacho Libre either, but it's a hilarious comedy. This is somewhat funny, but very, very creepy, very dark, very deep. Everything that I look for in horror is in Tusk, except the comedy. There is a little bit, a little bit of comedy, which I don't really care for in horror, but as a whole, this film pushes it up to the 10, and this is the number 1 out of 10, and I hope you enjoyed hearing my 10 picks. I'm going to post them uh, up on my website, and uh, rileyonfilm.com, and I hope you take note and take a look at any of the ones that you haven't seen. I'm also uh, on Internet Movie Database. I have a, a list there. It's called Top 10 Horror Films of the 2010s by Riley on Film. That's me. And uh, without any further ado, I hope you enjoy these films. Ta-ta. Thank you for listening to Riley on Film. I'm your host, Damian Riley. You can find out more and subscribe always for free at RileyOnFilm.com. Now, have a great day.